Welcome back to the show, folks. We are here with William Reynolds, the Atlantic County Prosecutor. Will, uh, listen, let's just jump right back in where we left off. Your relationships with the other departments in the county. Talk to us. So one of the things I learned from my parents is that uh, the true test of who you are and what you can accomplish is your relationships and how you treat other people, right? So one of the things that I watched my father do uh, when he was a, a unelected leader in Brigantine, right? And then he ran for mayor in 1985, lost by 24 votes, and it was the greatest loss the Reynolds family ever had because it made us hungry. Then I watched my mom be the president of the white collar workers in Brigantine. They formed their own union with my dad's help and she negotiated the contracts. Neither one of my parents were college educated. My dad went back to Langsley High School at 20 years old. My mom graduated in Philly, and neither one of them had any higher education. So they were, they were educated in a different world at a different time, and relationships mattered. And I took what I learned from my parents, and I parlayed that into my professional life on how you treat people and treat everybody the same, everybody with dignity and respect, and everybody with empathy, because I know how hard, and this is the segue to your question about leaders of local law enforcement agencies, chiefs of police. I know how hard their jobs are because as a municipal prosecutor, I had to deal with some of the same issues because you're appointed and your, your job is given to you by the local elected officials. And then you are responsible for an agency and responsible for everything that happens in that agency. And as a police officer, you may not actually have the training or the skill set to do everything in that agency, just like a prosecutor doesn't. And you have to be able to either go to training or create opportunities, to get other people to help you, and you have to be willing to listen. So what I did is I forged a relationship while I was a municipal prosecutor with all of the chiefs of police in Atlantic County in the towns that I worked. Well, now that I'm the county prosecutor, I've capitalized upon all those personal relationships, all those one-on-one -on -one interactions in the back room of municipal court to now say, hey, we're going to take that relationship and we're going to take it to the next level because now we're going to take all of that information that we learned about each other and build that trust and then create create policy and directives and guidelines and change the game and make an impact together. So what we've done between myself, Mr. Bergman, who's the first assistant, Pat Snyder, who's the chief of detectives, all three of us born and bred Atlanta County, all three of us Holy Spirit graduates, all three of us have a lot of relationships in the community. We capitalized upon those relationships on the law enforcement side and it's made the transition smooth and we go to every single chief's meeting and what we did is we took the opportunity to meet with all the chiefs meet with a lot of them individually hear what their challenges are in their department and how we can help them as the supervisory authority as the county prosecutor's office well, when you come to somebody and you say how can i help you they're generally receptive because we're not asking for them anything. We're asking, how can we help you? You know, so that's been tremendous. And then the spinoff of the local police departments is what we've done is at those local chiefs meetings, we've then hooked up with the DEA, the FBI, Homeland Security, right? All of these agencies are here in Atlanta County. Most people don't even know. Most people don't even know where their, where their offices are. Well, not only do I know who those people are now, do I have their cell phone numbers, I know where their offices are, and I interact with them on a, on a daily and weekly basis, and then we've done operations together. And I've been briefed in their office and watched video and understood what this operation was going to be, and then joined together, like one of the operations we did in Atlantic City when we took down the block on Florida Avenue. We sat in a public safety building at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I watched a drone fly over Florida Avenue, and I watched all the video cameras and the pole cams in the street and the officers' body-worn cameras, and I watched the whole operation with the guy who runs the DEA. Right. He's like, what are you doing here? And it's amazing that you are, exactly. Well, they're he was they're putting me in the first seat. Pleased which is, to, yeah, right. yeah, they put me in the first seat. You know, mm. So when I was briefed on that, here I am sitting in the first seat. When the, when the Vice President of the United States came to Atlantic City for the, the NAACP convention, I'm in the first seat. I'm being briefed by a room of about 80 people, and they're saying to me, Mr. Prosecutor, Right? So that's when it really became real for me from a law enforcement perspective. And I said, I need to meet every single person in this room and have a relationship with them so I can rely upon them in time of crisis. So one of the things that I've learned through other leaders, like the Colonel of State Police, Colonel Callahan, he talks about blue sky days. Well, when you meet people in blue sky days, it's not threatening, it's not crisis, it's not critical times. It's easy to have a relationship. It's hard to meet someone for the first time when you're in the middle of a crisis. 
because you don't have that trust. So that's why those relationships have been so significant on the law enforcement side. And what you've done and, and, and some of our students, I'm going to look and tell you, and folks out there, uh, I, mean, I know we're talking law enforcement and prosecutors, but it's cultivating those relationships, whether they were 10 years, five years ago, whatever. If you're in your passion of, of work and it works for you and you're proven fact, Listen, I see out there with, uh, you know, the, the walks on the boardwalk, uh, different uh, social service ag agencies from throughout the county. Tell us about those relationships, too, because it all works hand in hand. What you're doing with the others is, again, I want to say unprecedented. It was stuff that was talked about, been to those meetings, walked on some of those walks, but it always would seem to break down. So social services. So the, the, one of the most important things is keep showing up, right? Because how, how do things break down? People lose interest. Well, when leaders don't show up, people lose interest. So as a leader, I have to keep showing up all the time. That's why I love the grind. Show up at 6 o'clock in the morning to check the boardwalk, to check the homeless people, check the at-risk population. Show up at 10 o'clock at night to check the lights. Right, great, great segue from, from the social services. Not only are we putting social services agencies in a position to succeed because we're bringing them people that are in the at-risk initiative, ultimately what we're doing is we're trying to make public health and public safety synonymous in Atlantic City so if somebody has an issue, we can get them to the help. Arresting them doesn't, doesn't serve the purpose, right. right? And then going back to the lights, if the lights are turned on, it's more likely that crime won't happen. It's more likely that homeless people won't congregate or or build a, a, a you know an a entrapment or a fort or some type of some type of thing that we have to then take down and create more work for public works. So we've collectively, between law enforcement, social services, CREDA, DCA, ACPD, Councilman Shabazz, we have worked together. And what I do is I jump out in front and say, okay, this is what needs to happen. And using the lights as an example, we have over 600 lights fixed now. Mm -hmm. Another 362 are in the queue. I go to bi-weekly meetings with Creta, City of Atlantic City, Senator Brown, Calvi Electric, Atlantic City Electric. And we're working together to, to not only fix the lights right now, but to make a system in place so if a light goes out in the future, there's a fix right away, and we don't go back to the same problem. And beautiful, because I've heard those meetings as well. It's this light, that light, and it may be telling the truth, but now they're getting fixed. That's the bottom line. So we got about two minutes left, and I know we have some subjects we want to hit, so that means you have to come back. But talk about some of the things right here, again, and within two minutes that we haven't hit on yet, Will. So I, I mentioned the at-risk initiative. Uh -huh. That ties into the seven-day-a-week mobile outreach with Sheriff Scheffler, and you were at that meeting. Ultimately, the at-risk initiative does one thing. It identifies people who need help. They don't need to go to jail, they need help. And what we do is, if they have warrants, we'll detain them, engage them with social services. If they don't have warrants, we'll get them to social services right away. We have a working group that shares information every day, to, and that's basically to help clean up Atlantic City, get those people the help they need. It's a win for everybody, because the less people that are on the street that are homeless, mm -hmm. that are being engaged in social services, whether it's detox, rehab, mental health, doesn't make a difference. Whatever they need, we're there to give it to them. Our goal is not to arrest them. Our goal is to help them. Same token, if they won't receive the help, then they're going to go to county jail. That's right. non-negotiable. Right. You can either get the help or you can go to county jail. So the choice is yours. Another segue with that at-risk initiative is uh, the chairman, John Risley, of the Freeholders Board, or commissioners now, actually articulated in a public meeting saying that Prosecutor Reynolds and his team are enforcing the law, and we're going to be forced to build another facility at the Atlanta County Jail, and they're going to try to tie in mental health. And it, that would be the biggest win ever. You know it from your past That's experience, right. and I know it. It's what's needed. It's a blind spot. I've spoken about it publicly. I've did PBS interviews about it. It is what needs to happen for people that need the help the most. So there you have it, folks. Listen, we're talking with the prosecutor of Atlantic County, William Reynolds. And we'd love to have you back because I know there's so many more things going on. We'll be hitting these meetings. Will, thank you so much for joining us here at Stockton University. And God bless you and your team. My pleasure, brother. Thank you. You're welcome. Folks, stick around. We'll be right back with our next guest.